Hello, this is my draft for the final project and I am focusing on language, how, teaching the language of Shakespeare in the secondary education classroom. I feel personally that language, that Shakespeare's language is the hardest thing about Shakespeare's plays for students to grasp and I think it is what they are the most intimidated by. In fact, I feel like it most often times goes like this. Uh, this I did post this comic in the uh, Cheshire, but I do feel like this is the way that the teacher <laughs> is trying to explain Shakespeare to students and that they, like this little cat says, all the words are like thisith and thatith and it's crazy. And so I think what has happened though is that there's too much adaptation that strays too far away from the plays. Uh, I would use from our class, for an example, would be the mangas, because even though they have that visual aspect that gets through the text, uh, they leave out so much of the lines, like especially the to be or not to be speech, which is one of the most famous ones. And... I feel personally that it is important to keep the original language. So my problem was, is how can educators make Shakespeare more accessible in the secondary education classroom without losing the language? How can the original language of the text be preserved and still comprehended by high school students? That's not to say that absolutely no adaptations should be used. Uh, but it is to say that maybe in conjunction, because I feel like the original language is still important. So through my research, one of the first articles I ran across was how Shakespeare was being used in a high school classroom in Taiwan. And it was all girls and they were all 17 and they were learning to speak English as a second language. And the idea behind this experiment was that Shakespeare in particular can provide rich resources to address some of the linguistic and socioculture shortcomings of existing ESL teaching. Now, what that means is that think about when you've had to take a foreign language and most of the time you start out learning pleasantries like, how are you? Where's the bathroom? Um, you learn how to make a phone call and things like that. And it's all very pleasant, but you don't learn how to express emotion in English. And I noticed this, I observed a online course this summer, and I noticed this in the students that spoke English as a second language. If they felt strongly about something, I could tell they ran it through Google Translate trying to come up with the word that they meant. Um, like if they strongly agreed, like it would come off sounding like a questionnaire. They would actually say, I strongly agree. And so the idea behind this was to help students that have English as a second language learn how to express themselves in English and learn what the emotions and things that we express through our language, how it's conveyed. And what I thought was most interesting about this experiment is that the students didn't just read Shakespeare, but they used these exercises that were commonly performed by the Royal Shakespeare Company to better learn the language. So most of the exercises that are used in the ESL classroom in this particular experiment were by Cicely Berry who was at the time the director, this was in 2011. And one of the things she suggested was that to get, to access the ta um, tacital nature of the sound, that actors needed to be jumping and running and, and pacing back and forth as they perform these lines. And she says, we have to find ways to get them, the lines, 
not only on our tongue, but to make them part of our whole physical self in order to release them from the tyranny of the mind. Now that's a very dramatic way of essentially saying if you act them out, you be, you get a, a better grasp of what Shakespeare was trying to get across uh, better than just reading. And this goes along with the um, INTASC standard, which it's made for teachers and it's supposed to um, garner teacher development so they're more effective teachers. And the first standard is on learner development and it focuses on how learners grow and develop across the cognitive, linguistic, social, and emotional and physical areas. Now this is something we have in the US, but I was thinking that by having these Taiwanese students connect the words with movement, the student is able to develop cognitively because they're having to think about the words and the movement. Linguistically, they're having to speak the words and as well as their psychomotor skills because they're having to do so much at one time. So this activity in particular really helps with a variety of develop developmental areas. And another thing, another exercise that Cicely Berry suggested was taking the lines and screaming them and then taking the lines and whispering them. And the theory behind it was that by taking the language out of contest and speaking it in various ways, the learner is able to hear what ways sound right and therefore the line gives meaning to itself. Meaning that instead of reading the play and using context clues for what he's trying to say, uh, Barry suggests just reading it cold in a variety of ways and the meaning will come to you. So in this classroom, they used Macbeth. And the reason why they chose Macbeth, it was because it would allow students to explore through language the dark and aggressive passions and ambitions of a man and woman. So obviously Lady Macbeth and Macbeth. Uh, because they said that when reading in an English textbook, it only results in sentimental and conventional models of human behavior. And this goes back to what I said before, because I can remember learning French. And to this day, I can get through about halfway through a conversation by asking you how you are, what your name is, where you're from. And I can ask you where various buildings are. But my teacher always would try to say, like, he would ask us how we were and you know if you really were having a bad day i had no idea how to express that and the the same goes in the reverse when non-english speakers are trying to learn english they have these same types of textbooks how are you that'll be 425 please and they also use macbeth because key speeches are drenched in the language of both power and intimacy these two oppositional but related language play that uh, Cook identifies as central to the human interest, but nearly always neglected in ESL classrooms. Meaning that reading about phone conversations and reading about how to ask about the weather is not as interesting as reading about overthrowing your government and killing people. And that if you learn about these complex human emotions in a different language, that it results in a better understanding of the language you're trying to learn. So one of the activities that they did was they read Lady Macbeth's Unsex Me speech, and while they read it, they built an altar out of objects like water bottles, books, and candles. And this was based off uh, one of Cicely Berry's acting challenges, where players, um, players are to play with a random series of objects as they deliver a soliloquy. Now what was interesting were the students' responses. Some said it was creepy. Some said it was like a preparation for some kind of blood sacrifice. Uh, another student said that they could see Lady Macbeth really getting aggressive and ambitious as the altar was gradually built. 
Now, that's exactly the emotions that we would say Lady Macbeth conveys. Creepy. Um, she's obviously into blood sacrifice because she, <laughs> she wants everyone dead. Uh, well, not everyone. But, um, and that she is aggressive and ambitious throughout the entire play. In fact, her saying, unsex me now, is asking for her female attributes to be discarded to make her more ambitious and aggressive. But my favorite student response was this one that said, gesturing really makes words come alive. It's pretty hard to, or, and then she goes on to say that the most memorable action and key word for me is unsex, as the word is initially difficult to understand, but when paired with an action, it's easy to see what the word means and why Shakespeare chose to use that word in the particular context which to me is ding, ding, ding. That's exactly what we're trying to do when we teach Shakespeare to students. So basically overall, when you use these drama exercises in the English classroom, Shakespeare becomes more concrete for students because acting the language helps give it meaning. Another interesting article that I've come across is um, using Shakespeare for emotional regulation. Basically, um, this article was talking about how Shakespeare's language is like, speaking Shakespeare's language is like exercising in a gym, um, because this article is saying that, this article that I read was saying that our language now is watered down and Shakespeare language can help teach emotional eloquence. And one of my favorite quotes from this article was that parents seem to do their best to stop up the expression of anger in their children. But the only way a child can learn to manage anger is to practice it, which is amazing to me because I didn't think about that, that if students are performing Shakespeare and performing this anger and learning where to perform the anger, if you tie it in with the previous activity, they are able to express anger and learn how to express it through words. And so she goes on to say that the antisocial ch uh, students, troublemakers, depressed, dropouts, outcasts, they can find redemption when they find themselves in Shakespeare because they are using the language to give them power and to express themselves instead of um, other problematic ways that they might have used it before. So that concludes my presentation on how Shakespeare's language can be used and beneficial to student development in the secondary education classroom.